Hello everyone and welcome to another anatomy video after we talked in general about the cervical vertebra in this video we will focus more on the first cervical vertebra or what's called the atlas so let's get started so now let's talk about the first cervical vertebra or called the atlas here we have the atlas of the horse. Uh, the first thing we have to say here is that the atlas has its own specific shape and doesn't look like the typical uh, um, cervical vertebra. Uh, the first things we have to mention here in the caudal view, we can see that there is no body here. There is no body. The atlas doesn't have body. So there are two lateral masses here and there here and there lateral masses these two masses are connected dorsally by the dorsal arch and ventrally by the ventral arch they form all together what's called the vertebral foramen the vertebral foramen if we move to the dorsal view one more time you can see that on the dorsal arch here we have the dorsal tubercle the dorsal tubercle it's very clear and developed here in the horse while on the ventral arch we have the ventral tubercle we have the ventral tubercle of the atlas here let's move uh, to the dorsal uh, view again uh, we can uh, find that the transverse process is modified somehow and uh, they form laterally here what's called the wings of the atlas so this is the wings of the atlas the wing of the atlas in the horse here is caudoventrally directed caudoventrally directed and they form ventrally as you can hear, see here this fossa left and right this is the atlantic fossa the atlantic fossa if we move to the cranial view let's put it just like this or yeah this is dorsal this is dorsal and this is ventral or let's move it this way here so we are looking at the cranial view of the atlas so this is dorsal service this is ventral dorsal arch and ventral arch so in the cranial view here we can see the cranial articular processes or the cranial service this is the articular service or the articular area or the art this is the articulation area with the uh, condyles of the occipital bone or occipital condyles left and right here if you look exactly you will find that these cranial surfaces are separated ventrally by a narrow notch and dorsally by a very wide notch here so they are completely separated laterally they are also notched here and there let me just move it like this in the horse they are also notched here and deeply there you can find a triangular rough surface on each of them here and there in the horse triangular rough surface let's move now yeah as we said before this is the articular surface with the occipital condyle of the skull let's move to the caudal view in the caudal view we can see the articular or the caudal articular processes or the caudal articular uh, services uh, to further articulation with the cranial articular service of the axis of the axis as you can see here now in between dorsal to the ventral arch here you can also find the smooth surface smooth articular surface this surface called the, the fovea dentis fovea dentis is for the articulation with the ventral surface of the dens with the ventral surface of the dens here fovea dentis fovea dentis here 
for the articulation with the dance. There, more deeply dorsal to the ventral arch, you can see two depressions. Rough depressions is the attachment of the uh, ligamentum dentis, ligamentum dentis, which start from the dorsal surface of the dens. So we describe, we will describe the, later that on the, the dorsal surface of the dens, there are also two depressions, rough depressions, where the ligamentum dentis inserts. Now let's look at uh, the uh, dorsal view of the atlas one more time. Uh, here we describe uh, that this is the wings of the atlas. If you look exactly, you will find that there are some foramens, yeah, at the base of the wing. The caudal foramen, foramens here and there called the transverse foramen. This is the transverse foramen which opens here into the Atlantic fossa. Cranially here we can find two foramens. The first one, if you put something in it, you will go directly to the vertebral canal to the vertebral canal so it looks like this foramen is located in the lateral wall of the vertebral canal and that's why we will name it as a lateral vertebral foramen would you like to see it this is the lateral vertebral foramen there opens into the vertebral canal we have uh, the same on the other side lateral vertebral foramen while the other foramen which go just through the wing of the atlas here and opens to the atlantic fossa this is the alar foramen this is the alar foramen so that means here in this area you can find two foramens one to the vertebral canal this is the lateral vertebral foramen and the other one to the uh, through go through the uh, wing of the atlas and that's why we name it alar foramen alar foramen alar the name comes from from the latin name of the wing of the atlas so the wing of the atlas called also alla atlantis alla atlantis alar foramen alla atlantis so three foramens uh, could be found here lateral vertebral foramen, a lower foramen, and the transverse foramen caudal. And now let's uh, talk about the um, comparative anatomy of uh, different animal species. Here we have the atlas of the camel, this is the atlas of the horse, ox, sheep, dog, and cat. And let's start by looking into the dorsal arch. The dorsal arch. If you remember, we say that the, on the dorsal arch here in the horse, we have this dorsal tubercles developed here in the horse. While it's less clear, it's there, but it's less clear in the camel, and it's very rough and developed and uh, uh, rounded here in the ox the dorsal tubercle while it's also very small and not clear in the dog for example the sheep it's not in this case it's not like the the ox there is a dorsal tubercle but it's very small Now let's look at the foramens as we described before uh, in the wing or here on the side we can find three foramens of the horse the caudal one is the transverse foramen here uh, toward the vertebral canal we have the lateral vertebral foramen and through the wing of the atlas we have the alar foramen how uh, it's in, in the uh, in the uh, camel for example the camel caudal here we have the uh, transverse foramen left and right of course uh, here um, 
in the, in the horse, we forgot to tell you that these two foramens are somehow connected to each other in this area. They are connected to each other in this area. So this is the lateral vertebral foramen and the lower foramen connected to each other in this area. The same, for example, here in the ox, we have the lateral vertebral foramen and the lower foramen, but they are also connected to each other here. This is not the case in the camel. In the camel, the two foramens are completely separated. And in some samples, you may find also two openings of the alar foramen. Here in this sample, we have two separated foramens. One is the lateral vertebral foramen, the other one is the um, alar foramen. How can we know that which one is the alar, which one is the lateral vertebral foramen? As I said, put something into it. So in the alar foramen, you cannot go into the vertebral canal as you can see there. You can just uh, cross the wing of the atlas. So that means this is the alar foramen. The other one is the lateral vertebral foramen where you can end up inside the vertebral canal. So we talked about the horse, the camel. Now let's move to the ox in the ox, yes. Cranially here we have the lateral vertebral foramen, the alar foramen, the alar foramen. They are also connected to each other in this area. But if you look caudally here, you cannot find the transverse foramen. So the transverse foramen of the uh, atl uh, um, atlas is absent in the ox. The same for the sheep. We have the two cranial foramens, but not the transverse foramen. What about the dog? Let's make it a little bit clear here. So in the dog, we have caudally the transverse foramen. So we have caudally the transverse foramen left and right. Cranially, you can find just one foramen. Just one foramen. This is the lateral vertebral foramen. This is the lateral vertebral foramen here. Where is the alar foramen? There is no alar foramen, but instead we have this notch here called the alar notch. This is the alar notch, left and right. This is the alar notch, left and right. Alar notch. The same for the cat. The same for the cat. If you look at the atlas of the cat here, we have caudally the two transverse foramina or foramens there. And cranially we have the lateral vertebral foramen, but not the alar foramen. Instead we have uh, this notch here, this is the alar notch, alar notch, left and right. Now let's look at the wing uh, of the wings of the atlas. As we said before, in the horse is uh, uh, a thin, cowed ventral directed. Um, while in the ox, for example, is thicker, more transfers, and caudally it forms like two tuberosities, two tuberosities caudally. What about the uh, camel? The camel is more, it's not that, you know, extends laterally. The lateral uh, uh, rim or the lateral side is sharp, is sharp and uh, ends also caudally with a small uh, projection. Let's move to the, yeah, this is the she sheep. In the sheep, uh, the caudal tuberosity of the wings of the atlas uh, are very developed and clear. Let's move to the horse. Uh, to the horse, again, this is the cranial extremities. And this is the caudal extremity of cranial surface and caudal surface. Here, look at the wings of the atlas. The wings of the atlas in the uh, dog are flat, are flat, horizontally, and horizontal, and uh, uh, they look like a butterfly, like a butterfly on each side. Here, the same for the cat. Look, very flat, horizontal and looks like a butterfly. This is the wings of the atlas of the cat and dog.
now let's move to the ventral surface and look at the ventral arch so um, in this case we can find in the horse as we described before the ventral tubercle ventral tubercle which is uh, very developed here in the horse and specifically in the ox is very rough developed and rounded here the ventral tubercle that the ventral tubercle is absent in the camel there is no ventral tubercle in the camel in the um, dog it's a uh, small small and caudally oriented and here in the in the dog comparing to other animals as you can see you can see that the ventral arch is very narrow is very narrow comparing to that one for example of the sorry let's go to the same service here ventral service so the ventral arch is longer in the sheep comparing to that one of the dog comparing to that one of the dog the atlantic fossa is very clear in all animals more developed or clear in the horse but not in the carnivores not in the carnivores why as we described before the transfers processes which are represented here by the wings of the atlas are flat and horizontal and that's why the fossa atlantic uh, Atlantis is, is not that developed it's very deep in the horse and the ox for example it's less deep and or more flat in the camel